All right, guys, before we get started with today's video, we just want to announce the giveaway winners. All you have to do is DM us, either one of us, but most likely me, uh, your cash app, guys. Make sure you have cash app because that's the only thing we have. And uh, yeah, make sure you DM us. So I'll be putting the screenshots right here with 108 comments. We got Dulce Garcia. Um, yeah, congrats, girl. You got 108. And then... And then with 121 comments, commenting the no one talks about Bruno song, <laughs> we have Fabi Cortez. So go ahead and DM Jonathan your cash app and he will send you guys the money. So you can go to dinner tonight, girl. Yeah, guys. Thank you so much, girls, for your support and for coming in. I know that probably took a long time. And we're extra specially sorry for anyone we might have missed and you for sure think that you got more comments. Literally, Blanca started at the top. I started at the bottom of the comments and we kind of met in the middle. And those are the two that we saw the most. So, um, yeah, sorry if we missed anyone, but we don't think so. But just in case, uh, congrats and don't forget to DM us. Yep. Anyways, on with the podcast. Yo, 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 what's up, guys? Welcome back to another freaking podcast. Happy Friday, you guys. I hope you're having a good Friday. It is getting closer to the end of the school year, so if you're going to school, that's very exciting for you. Hang in there. You're almost there, girly. Yeah, anyways, guys, sorry for missing out being MIA for so long. I think it's like two weeks, but, you know, we've been grinding, we've been hustling out here, flying, traveling, and, uh, yeah, unfortunately... Now with a baby, the carry-on we used to have for the podcast equipment, now goes to Franco. So, sacrifices. Yeah, guys, on this last trip, we had five suitcases. And yeah. there, was, there was no room for another suitcase, so we couldn't bring our podcast stuff. So we used it more as of like uh, Instagram, YouTube content type of thing. Um, so you, we couldn't get any of your favorite, obviously, podcast guests. But some exciting ones are coming yes, soon. Sir. So keep an eye out for those. Yeah, guys, anyways, without further ado, I think we're today we're going to keep it nice and simple. We're going to read some uh, emails, give you guys some advice, because I feel like every time I say it, more of you guys send DMs because you either don't know the email, which is spillthebeansjj at gmail.com, or you can DM it to us if it's nice and short, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to start off with this one. I told Jonathan about this because I got this in my DMs, and I was like, mm, I want to see what his point of view is, but also... It kind of made me like I have to bring awareness to this because you guys know we're a relationships type of podcast and we like to tell you guys that many shit. Ah. But anyways, this starts off with I want to get my nose job done, but my husband doesn't want me to. He says it's a waste of money and it doesn't benefit us in anything. I've told him it's something I've wanted to do before. I even met him and I'm really self-conscious of my nose to the point that I don't like to take pictures of myself. It's my money that I would be spending, not a dime of his. But he says I'm stupid and immature for wanting it. He is so against it that he says he doesn't. T he won't take care of our child if I were to do it and need, uh, and need recovery time. I don't know what to do. I also don't want to involve family because then it will become cheesy. You know how it is in the Mexican families. I feel like he's only against it because I'll be spending money he wants to use for something else. I would love to have your opinion and Jonathan's in this matter. You guys have um, always had great advice. Girl, that is so dumb. Leave him, I guess. <laughs> no, seriously. And I wanted to, uh, to talk about this because, Chai, you're literally slapping me with your freaking tail, girl. Um, I've also thought about getting a nose job and a BBL. And, you know, I've thought about getting surgeries. And every single time I tell Jonathan, he's like, do it. Like, I'll pay for it. And I'm like, all right, on my way. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring it up because I know that you yeah. have a strong opinion on this. So Yeah, I feel like insecurities that you can't change through health mannerisms like working out and stuff like that um like do, if you want to do a bbl go for it but like i feel like you should also give you know the gym and eating right a chance first before you go through that pain and stuff because there are girls that even though they let ganas al gym and all that they just won't achieve the body that they want so but obviously like a nose uh other things like that guys no you can't really change that unless you do surgery and it's your life it's it sounds like you if you watch this i'm Assuming you're relatively, you know, on the younger side, like less than 50 years old. So you still have a whole life ahead of you with a brand new nose, girl. So you go ahead and do it. Your husband is either really cheap or really insecure because obviously you're going to glow up and he's going to be like, whoa, fuck, like she's going to leave me or something. So, 
yeah definitely do it like don't it's your money it's your life like i know people when they get a new nose it like changes their lives forever your selfies will come out more fire uh, this is all according to you you know well it's the it's the point the part where she says that she doesn't take pictures because she doesn't like yeah. her nose like that's when you should be even more supportive and be like no but like i will take care of her son for recovery yeah. time you go and get a nose job you know i don't know what his deal is yeah it's it, it and especially because you said that you won't be spending a dime of his money like it's all going to be your money so like what is really the issue here you know yeah. is it that he doesn't want to take care of the baby because you're going to have um downtime or because there's i feel like he's going to have a hotter wife you know and like yeah. your eyes so i really want to talk about this because i'm like i i thought about getting work done in the past and especially now with the baby girl my boobs are like down to my knees and I lost all my butt and I have stretch marks and loose skin so I'm like if one day I wanted to get a BBL and Jonathan was like you're not gonna get one like you're so stupid and immature for that I'd be like leave him sis <laughs> you know yeah, I would never be opposed to Blanca doing anything the only thing that did like weird me out was her when she did her lips but that was just like a texture type of thing like I didn't know what Botox was, so I was like, if I kiss you, like, am I going to be able to bite your lips and stuff like that? Or is, like, goo going to squirt out? Like, Ew. you know me. Like, I didn't know nothing of that. But that's the only thing that kind of tripped me out, used to do, tripped me out. But um, other than that, she can do whatever. Yeah, and I think it's, of course, I, your partner should have a say in it. Like, they should, you should always make sure that they're supportive in everything that you do. But they shouldn't have, be, like, the deciding factor. You know, like, if you want to get your nose job, if you want to get Botox, um, your lips done and all that, you shouldn't have to be asking for permission. I feel like you should just, you should already have the support. Like, if you marry someone or have a child with someone, I feel like you should know that they're going to support you in anything that you do throughout your life. And they're not going to dip out when, like, oh, I want to get a nose job or I want to get my lips done, you know? But, like, we go back to it, babe, right? Like, we go back to what we say, like, during the talking stage and the dating stage. Because she said husband? Well, I don't know if she said husband, but they have a, a baby. A baby right? together, right? So oh, they yeah, husband. Yeah, so, like, don't you think, like, for example, I, I, because I, I use each other as an example. During our talking stage or our dating stage, you would have obviously, like, you've always told me you hated your nose, right? Mm -hmm. And if I would have given you that vibe, it would have been such a turnoff, right? Like, if I would have given you, like, no, you're not, you, you look pretty without well, it, like, you know no, what I mean? I'm going to stop you right there right now because during the talking stage like where i'm obviously i feel like we're infatuated with each other like we can't do no wrong so it's no. like yes i still think you can do things that come off of like weird or like a turn off well they think? come off as, as weird but not to the point where you're like it's like a deciding factor if i'm gonna marry you you know but i but then i do want to contradict myself because at the beginning like when Jonathan was super toxic he'd be like why are you wearing shorts to school you know like mm -hmm. in that type of way and I'd be like dude not even my dad tells me not that. even shorts babe the one time <laughs> I ever said that to you you were wearing a super short short skirt I've never worn skirts to school yeah no, no well it was shorts remember, but they were like um they were like high-waisted and they yeah. were they, they weren't like shorts, shorts they like weren't, athletic shorts no they were like um like going out shorts like little like they were flowy yeah. shorts yeah. and they were high-waisted and they were a little bit short but obviously like not if they would have been too short then i would have gotten dress colored at school right so you when you told me that i was like dude not even my dad tells yeah. me what to wear well, and your what dad doesn't see you leave in the morning so yeah or even then like he would see me get home from school with whatever mm -hmm. i wore but even then i was like Ew, like, yeah, it could have been a turn off, but I, I like, there was also some of me, I'm like, oh, like, I could see past that, you know? Oh, I see. So, like, say I was like, oh, we had just started talking, I'm like, yeah, I want to get a nose job, and you're like, I think that's so mature. Maybe then I, I would be, like, because I was so infatuated with you, we were in, like, the honeymoon stage, oh. I would have been like, oh, maybe it is mature. No, but like, a nose maybe job, I'll... that's huge. I know, but, it's but like that's my... what I'm saying, like, I think you're trying to say, like, oh, th that should have been a red flag from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But it's like I'm saying, like, love blinds you at the beginning. So I feel like I would have yeah. been like, oh, I can overlook but, that. But, I mean, you have a whole ass kid with someone, and then you, like, still and then don't I, see that. And then that's that's why I was kind of, like, contradicting myself. Because I'm um, thinking back to when we last got back together. And I think one day you tried to tell me, like, what I couldn't wear to a baile. And I was like, oh, I'm like, no, like, I'm going to wear it. You know, because mm -hmm. I did, I personally didn't think it was too revealing. And then I was like, had you kept up with that mindset of you can't wear this? Because right now you're like, no, like wear a short dress. Yeah. Like I want you to show your boobs, you know? Yeah. 
But I, before we got married, if you had like kept that mentality and kept telling me daily, like you can wear that, you can't, I feel like I wouldn't have married you. So mm. that's why I just contradicted myself. Cause like, yeah, at the beginning, but yeah. when you're thinking about like marriage, then you should be thinking about the red flags. Yeah. So I don't know what I was trying to go. Like, I don't know what kind of. Yeah. Kind you of just advice. contradicted yourself. Yeah. So like, what kind of. You basically advice? said like, obviously, babe, at it's the beginning, you don't say, Hey, by the way, I'm really insecure my nose. And the guy's not going to be like, well, I think that's stupid. Right, but, but what I'm also to trying to say is that you changed, you yeah. know? So maybe at the beginning you would have been like, no, the nose job is so stupid. Yeah. And then those years in... No, I would have been like, no, babe, you're perfect. You don't need a nose job. Exactly, you know? but yeah, so maybe it wouldn't have been a red flag. Like, I don't know what to tell you, girl. I'm like trying to make her feel better. Yeah. But it's like, there. I don't know. Like, I don't really see what his point of... I don't know, maybe you make it seem... No, this girl made it seem like really bad. Maybe he's just... In all other aspects, he's a really good husband and a but really he, good dad. But like, he literally told her, you're stupid and immature for oh, yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. She quoted him. It's just some guys, some people just see surgery as really bad, you know? Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people that aren't open-minded. Like, you're born with it, deal with it, like, where some of us all have an ugly thing, like, but that's not okay. Like, you have the right to change your life, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's your life, and I think it's cliche to say, like, you only live once. But seriously, you only live once. Get a nose job and have a happy life with your nose yeah. job, you know? Don't let anybody tell you what or what you can or can't do with your body, especially if it's going to make you feel a little bit more secure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really I really wanted to talk about that because if you see me pop out with the BBL, just know Jonathan was very, very supportive of it. Yes, very supportive. <laughs> If you see me with a BBL, mind your business. <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> Wait, why am I not allowed to spill the beans? No, I do kind of... I've been talking to Blanca that I do maybe want to get... What's it called? Lipo? Um, yeah, Lipo. On my face, guys, because the way I'm built, right? <laughs> I'm built different. <laughs> no. No matter how skinny I get, no matter... Even when in high school I had a six-pack and I was buff and whatever, I o have always had chubby cheeks. It's just genetic. And I've never had a really defined jawline or stuff like that. So um, I would probably want to do something about that. Because I feel like once I reach 30 or 40, no matter how clean and, and well fit I am, I'm going to have like my dad's jeans. And my dad's like really takes care of himself, but he does have really big cheeks and like they like hang because it's just age, you know? But so that's something like, I don't want. I would say there it's health related too, because your dad takes care of himself because of health issues yeah, because he had of in the past, issues. which are genetic. Yeah. So and then I was also thinking the the more you grow, your metabolism slows down a yeah, lot. A so lot. It, it's probably gonna take us like five years to get to the body that we want. And why not get a little bit of help with a little bit of liposuction? Yeah, you because know? like I said, no matter how fit, like in my high school pictures, yeah, I'm super slim and my face is more slim, but I've always had these little cheeks here. And eventually these little cheeks right here are going to droop because of age. So I'm going to do something about it. Um, and then also, what was I going to say? Oh, and like we always say or always see with like fitness instructors, you can't target burn fat. Yeah, so it's can. like you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to work out so that my stomach fat goes away. So you can just go to lipo and be like, can you please take the stomach pad away? Mm -hmm. So I'm not opposed to lipo. I thought about it too. Actually, before I got pregnant, I was um, thinking about getting liposuction. And then Franco literally sucked everything out of me. So I'm like, maybe I should have gotten pregnant a long time ago. Okay. This one says, I was born in Mexico and was brought to the U.S. at the age of four. All my siblings were born in Mexico. My parents are undocumented too. I am 21 now. My siblings and I all have that gap. However, I'm losing hope on ever getting papers since I've had that up for years now and there has been no progress. I have been dating my boyfriend for almost five years and we have had ups and downs in like, like any relationship. He has cheated on me before, but I decided to forgive him and move on since it's almost been two years now since that incident. I truly believe he's an amazing partner and will be a wonderful father if we stay together. However, he is also undocumented and does not have that guy and it is something I constantly think about because I don't want to live my life I don't want to live the life my parents lived with them not being able to see their parents once they passed away. My mom and I have a really close, strong relationship, and she has built her home in Mexico and is th uh, talking about moving back soon, and I'm scared to not be able to see her again. I don't know if I should stay with my current boyfriend or be a bit more open to the possibility of finding someone else and have the possibility of getting papers and being able to visit my country and my family again. Hey, girl. Hey. Remember we talked about this? What? Did we talk about it on the podcast or a YouTube video? I, I asked this before. I was like, hey, if you 
if you initially started talking to someone, you were in the talking mm -hmm. stage, you didn't love them yet. Mm -hmm. You just really liked them and you found out they didn't have papers and you don't have papers. Would that be kind of trigger you to stop talking to them? Because there's no future in terms of arreglando papeles, you know? Right. And a lot of people came for me because they thought that that was so dumb of me to say because if you love each other, that doesn't matter. But I emphasize that it's before the love. It's mm -hmm. before that. It's like you're talking, you're like having you're dinner and, and you find out, you know, I'm a DACA student too. I don't, you know. Or I don't have papers at all. I don't have papers at all, you know. And it's like, you know, uh, ghost or sorry. Mm -hmm. like, you're not going to say, you don't have papers. I can't keep talking to you. But just be like, hey, you're not my type, you know. And bite the, bite the, come on, just, just bite the rag and, and, you know. Yeah, really I really like them, but there's billions of people. So, there's, like, a lot, because, I don't remember when you asked this, but it was, like, when we first started our podcast, no? Yeah. And I think, in that, after that time, I would have been, like, no, like, I would have just, like, still stayed, mm -hmm. because, obviously, like, that wasn't a deciding factor for me, but I feel like, now that I went back to Mexico and I know what it's like to holy shit like see your family again and like and her mom is over or planning to finish. yeah and like just seeing my mom throughout the years like thank God that my grandma and my grandparents can come and visit my mom was able to see them again but I'm like say that they wouldn't have been able to come like I think about my dad a lot not being able to see his mom ever again and she yeah. passed away and he wasn't able like he was going crazy when that happened like, thinking about that, I'm like, holy shit, if I have the power or, like, to help them one day get their papers and go back to their country, I would love that. So now that I went back to Mexico and that I saw all of these things that, obviously, antes no sabía, so maybe what you don't know doesn't hurt you. But this, like, but it now... Seems like this girl knows more than just the average. Exactly. And I guess in in a way you can be, like, oh, que interesada, you know, but... That's a whole ass future, you know, like not being able to go back to your country. Now, like thinking about, oh, my God, if my mom moves back to Mexico, I'm never going to be able to see her again. And this guy cheated on you and like you've had yeah. your ups and downs. Like maybe, I don't know. It just. And, but he changed, babe. Yeah. And that's the thing. Because now he would be an amazing husband and father. Yeah. But let me tell you, do you think that if she truly like was all in, loved him oh, yeah, she so went much, send this email. truly forgave him, she would be thinking about this? No. No, like there's still somewhere deep down there's like, he cheated on me, like I can leave if I want to, and yeah. that, like, if you are thinking about it, I think that you should take the route that your heart truly desires, that your, your head desires. Don't let your heart choose, because sometimes your heart does betray you, I would say, like yeah. you have to be a little bit more logical. I think you have to be logical. Be like, look, do I stay with... How long? Five years with this guy? Or mm. less? Um, did she say? Yeah, no, I don't know why five keeps popping into my head. Four. Oh, I know. Yeah, five. Five. Yeah. So it's like five years of knowing this guy and ups and downs and cheating on me. And, but we love each other at the end of the day. Or play the scenario. You're 40. Your mom decided to move to Mexico. You never saw her again? And you'll never see her go. You, you know that she... You get the news... You know, let's all pray that this doesn't happen, but you get news from your cousins or your whoever's over there. Your mom herself calls you, hey, I'm really sick, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm in my last, you know, months or whatever. Like, you're 40. You already have kids. You have a life here, but you can't go and see your mom. And I'm assuming in 40 years, it's going to be virtually impossible to cruzar con un coyote because of technology mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, it's getting more intense, so... You know, this guy that I've known for five years or my mom that, you know, that I love her in church. Yeah, I, I didn't want to put it that way. Like, we're obviously not telling you, like, choose this or that. But you do have to take into consideration, like, your mom, you know, now. Or play or wait and see if anything happens with that. Yeah, because, yeah, there I'll are skip. loopholes, you know, but sometimes it is much easier to be married to a citizen. No, I mean, risk it, like, fucking 2028. Someone comes in and gives everyone. Yeah, before my, I know that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, and there's also loopholes with that where mm -hmm. you can arreglar, like, but it's, it's Crazy hard. Crazy loopholes yeah. get jumped. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, girl. I at this point, like where I am in my life right now, I would be like, holy shit! I don't think that I would stay. You would leave me with a kid? No, like now, like with my mature thoughts right no, now. No, but you're saying right now in your life. 
Oh, like with the kid? No, because we I, like I obviously already chose you, you know. But I'm saying like with my thoughts right now, if right now without a kid it was just me right now, my mature thoughts, and I started dating someone that didn't have papers, oh. I would have a much more informed, mature decision to Damn, not you didn't date. Saw that <laughs> to not date someone that doesn't have papers. No, yeah, I'll for sure. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> if someone didn't have papers and I have papers, deuces. <laughs> I don't care how pretty you are, I don't care how nice you are. Yeah, like, <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's for my parents, you know, like you say. I want them to go back if they couldn't, blah, 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 etc. you know, emergencies. And it's hard to think about because there's times when you're like, no, like, the love is too much, which sometimes, yeah, you know, like, cuando dicen, in sickness and health, you choose your partner to be with you for the rest of your life, the good and the bad. But yeah, if you guys like aren't married. But that's also your mom. Exactly. Be like, no, no, no. Oh, what? I'm saying, confront your mom, yeah. Be like, hey, mom, oh, I'm man, gonna she... have, I'm gonna have grandkids. Okay, but my mom, like, she still thinks this? about like going back to she would Mexico. Never. She I know would she would never, never, but she still thinks about it. Like, why does she buy a house over there? Okay, just because it's the same she did. No, she literally she said, just in case been. one day I go back, you know. No, she would never. So it's like, I don't know. I guess it's really hard. I guess at that time you just tell your mom, be like, ¿Quién la va a cuidar ya? ¿Quién le va a cambiar los pompers? ¿Quién no va a querer a sus nietos? So, just convince her not to leave. Either convince her not to leave or leave. Or tell your husband, be like, look, I picked you, but Boyfriend. you have to... You ha oh, yeah. You have to echarle ganas para support my mom when she's old. True. Yeah. yeah. Give him that ultimatum. That was a really, like, deep one. I mean, I both ways you're in like that stuff. Tell me your husband get it to you <laughs> to be rich, but nah. But that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. What would you guys do in the comments? What be you honest. Do? Because a lot of you guys say, se quieren hacer así that, you know? A lot of you guys se quieren hacer los, like, um, como se dice? Well, how do our people calling the people nowadays on Twitter? Oh, you guys are so, um, like, the people that get easily offended. Karen's? Not Karen's. Um, wow, I can't think I of the word. I can't. I haven't heard that phrase. Yeah, it's like, don't be so blah, blah, blah. Don't be so butter. I Like, something like that. Um, sensitive? Yeah, sensitive, right? Um, yeah, like, don't be sensitive. Like, actually think, like, put a comment with your real thoughts. Like, as soon as you heard the story... What's the first thing that popped into your head? Yeah. Like, I'm a, oh no, I'm staying. Or, and oh, no, comment that. I'm the leaving. first and thing yeah. that popped into your head. Like, don't start thinking about it and be like, oh, actually, no, I don't want to be interesada vibes. Like, no, like, actually tell me. Yeah. Because I probably did come off as an interesada, but knowing what I know now, like, going back to Mexico, like, I want my parents to experience that one day. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Hey guys, I know you guys must get thousands of emails, but honestly, I'd love to see your guys' input on my situation considering we are all Mexican. So basically, I've been married for almost two years and I just had my baby girl literally a week before you guys had Franco. Aww. Almost six months into our marriage, I had moved into my suegro so me and my husband could save for our house. We also worked from home and honestly, I liked living there, but everything changed once I got pregnant. I used to think they were the best family and I got so lucky with my husband but later realized they weren't all that and my husband is a total narcissist and machista. I thought it was just pregnancy hormones and never trusted my gut. Fast forward to January 2022, I have our beautiful baby and two weeks postpartum I decided to move myself and my baby back to my mom's house because my in-laws couldn't respect the boundaries I had set for myself and my baby. But I spoke with them and tried to leave on good terms, telling them that it's nothing personal. I just want to be comfortable in a house where my boundaries wouldn't be, would be respected, no hurt feelings. My husband ended up coming to live with me at my mom's a week after, and since then, I would go to my soldier's house so they could see the baby, and no one in their family would talk to me. I didn't take it personal because I knew they had felt like I had taken their baby away from them, considering she was the first grandchild, niece, and great-grandchild. And when we lived in their home, they would really just act like it was their baby anyways. Mind you, I told them they could visit us at my mom's whenever they liked, and in the three months, they never once did, and they were only like 30 minutes away. Earlier this month, my husband finally found us an apartment, and the day we moved, we had been arguing all day before we even got there. Once we get there, he's opening the gate to the house and tells me, No más te tengo que aguantar un año más y ya. <gasps> Implying he's just using me. I didn't see it at first, but now that I think about it, we met in February of 2020, started dating a month later, and got married in May of 2020. Also found out he cheated on me with tons of women through social media on two accounts, one being personal and the other one being our business account that we shared as of 2021. 
Looking back, I'm honestly convinced he did use me just for that, considering he already got his residency card, and I'm really contemplating on what I should do next. And would like to hear you guys' opinion, considering upon a previous video, Jonathan said he would fix your status if you guys want to work out. Hope to hear feedback from you guys, and I'm sending you and your beautiful family nothing but blessings. Dang, girl. <sighs> I would call the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... I would call ICE. When... Because uh, I remember we talked about this and you said, no, like, I would still fix your papers yeah. regardless. Good terms. Yeah. These are good terms, girl. Oh. He cheated on you on two different accounts. Face. And imagine I would tell you that, babe. Like, literally imagine the scenario. Yeah, we're moving. Like, let's, We've been mad at each other no, all hold day. Because let's be honest. When we were moving into our apartment, we were arguing the day that we were moving. Mm -hmm. No. The day, yeah, because I remember it was like a stupid ass argument too, because it was Jonathan um, had asked for the day off so we could move, and then we're like, ah, was, in some conversation we said let's just do it tomorrow, but then you, I was like, okay, if you're not gonna stay home from work, like yeah, we'll do it tomorrow, but then you did stay home from work, and then I was like, well, did you tell the girl lady that we'll go get the keys today? And you're like, no, you said we're gonna go tomorrow. And then I got mad because like, you're already here, so let's just go get the key so we can move in today. So we were arguing, okay? So let's go into that scenario. We're arguing all day. We're going to get the keys. And then I'm like, oh, no más tengo que aguantar un año ya. <gasps> what would you do? I would like straight up not even move into the apartment. Really? Yeah. Like, what? Like, ponte bien. Like, yeah, no. I would leave you. Why would you be using me for papers? Yeah. And then, like, finding out that I was cheating on you. Oh, yeah. On top That's of that. cherry on top. No, hombre. Girl, what are you doing? Like, we yeah. never said, oh, even if we ended on bad terms, I would fix her status. Yeah. No, like, that is shitty. First of all, he admitted to using you. And, and you have a baby now. On you. So yeah. he's probably going to leave you. <gasps> That's true. Leave you and the baby. You know? What should she do? I think she should. I think she should grab him by the balls, like, in, like, a metaphorical sense and be like, you cut this shit out. You tell me, are you for real going to leave me? Or I stop the process, like. I straight up tell, because even though he got his residency card, girl, like, you can still, like, go to your lawyer, whoever you've been using, or the government, be like, he, I found out he's just using me for it, and that's illegal. I do not want to go to jail. Please stop it right now, because that's illegal. <laughs> that is really good advice. Yeah. yeah, so. And I know that it must hurt, because obviously, like, you like this guy. There could have been some red flags, because she says you guys met February of 2020, and by May you were already married. Like, come on, yeah, that's, that's a little bit flag. of a red flag. Um, and then a baby right away. And then a baby right But then again, like, I'm thinking, you at that point, you should have just not moved into the apartment. You should have just stayed with your mom and left him the responsibility of the apartment. Like, I don't know. I feel like guys are always the ones... For the majority of the part, hesitant on getting married so quickly. Yeah. So I feel like him doing it is like, get it out of you know? That was kind of a right Maybe his parents treating you so nicely at the beginning. They were on, in on it too. I don't know, girl. Honestly, I would do what Jonathan said. And like, don't let him. Like right now, he's acting like, oh, like I'm about to get papers. I just have yeah. to deal with you for a year. So now you step in, yaste la rura, and be like, you know what? Either you stop the shit right now, or I'm just yeah, girl, process. because I'm sure your body has changed. You know, you just gave birth. Maybe you're not in the best condition of your life, like when you met him. So in his eyes, he's probably like, she got an attitude. We're fighting, and she changed physically. Like, fuck that. Like, if she told you that, like, like if he told you that after just having a baby, that's when I was the most in love with Blanca. So I would never say that to her, like after a baby. So like. The fact that he had the boss to tell you that after having the baby, it's like kind of weird vibes, you know? Yeah, it is. It sucks. And you know what I was thinking? I was watching this girl. I don't know if you saw me watching this girl on YouTube last night, the white girl. Yeah. Um, It's so sad to like think about your spouse, your partner being anything but supportive after, like when you're in your postpartum. Um like your fourth trimester of pregnancy because this girl was like they literally did like a QA, and a like dad Q&A and she was like oh like what do you think about my body changes he's like well at the beginning like when you were growing the baby I thought well it was healthy weight good job like you of growing our baby girl he's like no it's yeah. a little you bit you should have yeah. said that and she uploaded like as soon as she asked it he's like well do you want me to be honest and she's like yeah I want you to be honest and he said that and she I'm like, uploaded it? Yeah. And now they're separated. This was the oh. end. I was, I was going through all her videos because I found the video of her saying, like, we separated. Oh, no, duh. 
But I'm like, dude, like if Jonathan never told me that and my, especially at the beginning, dude, at the beginning, my hormones were so bad. I was like, if you had said that to me, I would have probably like left you in that exact You always moment. want to leave me. You're always saying it like, <laughs> like at if, least 10 times. If you would have said it. that, babe, don't you think? I would have left you too. <laughs> if I would have said that to you. Yeah. No, but seriously, I was like, oh my God, like. I just don't stay with someone that makes you feel like that. Even if you had a baby, like, con más razón, be like, you know what, let's just co-parent in a healthy way and, like, uh, we're not going to work out, you know? Because, yeah, when you're postpartum, you're so sensitive sensitive, and, like, I literally cried because a freaking dog had a miscarriage. <laughs> Do you remember that? A dog? Yeah, I remember you were sitting in the, in the rocking chair and I was, I think I was pumping and you were with Franco and I, like, I looked at you and I started crying. You're like, whoa, like, you're scaring me. And I was like... She just had a miscarriage. Bailey, like the girl that I Oh, Bailey, yeah. Pues tía, eso, you see so many dog TikTokers that I, I have. I know. Them. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I couldn't imagine you being anything but supportive at the beginning. That would have sucked. I was. Por eso. Like, like, being, like, I can't imagine you being anything but supportive. Oh. Like you were. Thanks. <laughs> Not you throwing yourself into the floor. <laughs> I think we're just broken records. We're just like, leave. But like, really, what else can you do? You're yeah. not going to sit there and wait for someone to change, right? It's because life is so short, guys, that like, you have to. Mm-hmm. You just got to. Yeah, oof, girl. If I was, if I was you, man, the things I would do. Not the oof. <laughs> the things I would do to that guy, man, I would freaking hide cocaine and fork. That's just me. <laughs> you, you can just tell you can just lawyer call, that it's a legal yeah. thing. <laughs> Alright, this one says, this one's funny because at the end, I don't know why it has a picture of a chihuahua with a mole. Wait, screenshot it so you can put it on the podcast. Are you trying to say I look like that? Or I used to when you sent this? Because my hair was longer. <laughs> Anyways, I've been watching Black of Forever seriously, like way back when you guys took a break. And Jonathan went to Texas. I looked up to Blanca forever. Your energy and strength is my biggest thing. I that was my biggest. I look up to you and I love y'all's relationship. How much it has grown. Thank you. I need advice about my suegros. My boyfriend is mixed, white and Mexican, and I'm not sure if that has a part in it. But my suegra is so fake to me. My boyfriend has a twin, and she treats his white girlfriend so much better. She genuinely talks behind my back with her, and I keep my distance because they're so mean to me. I don't know what to do. At this point, I've let it just take its course, but I need advice because I don't know how I should be. Like, should I be strong or, or I don't know? I just need some motivation to keep me going. My boyfriend always stands up for me and makes sure nothing passes him. But still, please, Blanca, share some of your peace. Love you guys. P.S. Y'all should do a video podcast on relationship advice. Follow me on Insta if you want. <laughs> I, love I that. couldn't say your handle because this is anonymous, but... Don't go to our recently followed app. <laughs> Um, I think there's a major part in like when people say that when you marry someone like you marry them not their family like their family is just a bonus so que bueno que te lleves bien con la familia but if you don't get along with your suegros your husband is respectful and he doesn't let them like insult you in front of him then that's good but also like you don't have to put yourself in a situation where you can get insult insulted mm -hmm. am I saying that word right? Yeah. Um, so I don't think that you should be trying hard to like get to like get her to like you you shouldn't have to go over if you don't feel comfortable and get one okay to husband um stands up for you but yeah. yeah you shouldn't don't feel forced to have like a good relationship don't feel forced to go over don't feel forced to do any of that if you're not comfortable then just don't go and just tell your husband like hey you know what i heard that your mom talked behind my back with your um brother's wife and i don't like that so i personally don't want to go over. and she's white yeah like that should be the hugest red flag like your mom is literally racist is what i'm she's getting at yeah and but i'm just saying like if you have a good relationship with your husband you married him you don't have to get along with his family si él la quiere ir a visitar que él vaya but you can just stay home and but the end of the day you do marry the family you do and like it, it i think with time it could probably escalate and things could get worse but if you distance yourself from them like yeah. you shouldn't really from the beginning like them. you just they know you as the thanksgiving christmas no más ahí los tienes que aguantar they'll get used to that you know yeah but pobrecitos like you got to think about like her kids in the future she's gonna her kids are gonna see her cousins being treated differently yeah. that's you know so that's so sad. sad yeah but then you tell your kid be like your grandma's a racist piece of shit 
Yeah. That's why we don't go that's over. Why, yeah, that's why we don't go over. And that sucks, like, for the grandma, too. Like, don't, well, I guess not if you're racist, but you wouldn't want to see the kids. But it's like, damn, like, you're losing your grandchildren, basically. Yeah. Like, but fuck that. Imagine if that's with her and then the kids come out looking a little bit more Mexican. Like, the, the grandma might even be mean towards mm -hmm. them, you know? Oh, hell no. That'd be sweet. Like, una cosa's be mean to me, but to my kid, I could not yeah. imagine anyone being mad, mean to Franco. I would square up. But yeah, I think that's just simple advice. It's like, you don't have to get along with the family. But the good thing here is that your boyfriend is supportive mm -hmm. and respects you and stands out for you, which is really good. So as long as you have his support and it's him and he's not a mama's boy, then all you, I mean, you go for it, you know? Yeah, like don't... And if they're twins, I'm imagining... I want to say that all twins are kind of really connected and get along. So maybe in the near future, the twin brother can see that and be mm -hmm. like hey why are you treating my my brother's girlfriend differently like i we love her too you know like why are you being like that i guess you can go like one of two ways like one is like oh just distance yourself like blah 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 and another one just like be sure like why are you, don't you like me you know yeah. like why don't you want to why don't you talk to me treat me the same way you, uh, you treat this white girl over here but if you don't if you want to save yourself your drama girl yeah just don't go over i would just get out of there just see them for I would the call the suegras wherever she works and <laughs> complain and do anonymous emails and tell her that she's a racist piece of shit until she gets fired. No. <laughs> okay, Jonathan is going to extremes, but... Okay, this one reads, My boyfriend, my baby's father, never seems to pay attention to me. Every time I speak to him or ask him a question, it takes him minutes to respond back to me. He's always on his phone, either watching or s watching something, messaging his coworkers, or scrolling through social media. It's like I've always, I'm always talking to him to a wall. When I talk to him about how I feel or ask him why he acts like the way he does, he says I'm not trying to argue right now and drops the combo. Spending time with me for him is us living in the same house. Also, my DAC expired months ago, and I've asked him to renew it. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and he he always says he doesn't have money for it, but he buys other expensive stuff. My mom even offered to pay for it, and he can pay her back, but he says no. I understand it's his money, but I need my license, and he doesn't want me to work or get married to me, so I literally have nothing. Also, when we visit my mom, he doesn't say hi first or says anything to her, and I'm really nice to his mom. I always try to bond with her. I need advice. Love you guys. <laughs> Same thing. When you're dating, before you have a baby, doesn't this stuff come up? But even then, like, just leave that in the past, babe. Obviously, they're already married, so go from there. <sighs> just don't. I guess que quiero que se les clave. And for all the girls right now that are dating, don't have kids, just started talking to a guy. Girls, really look at those details. Like, really do. You go to a restaurant your first date, he tips a dollar. Fucking don't go out with him again. You go through, you're in, stuck in traffic and he rages. Whoa, what the fuck? Like, this is our first date and you have road rage? Like, what the fuck? Like, you know? Yeah. I have funny road rage. I don't really have like aggressive road rage. So that's a bit. Oh you come from. my god, this is so annoying. I just pisses me off. Yeah. I think the biggest thing here is like I said, I always hate the feeling of feeling helpless. Mm -hmm. And right now you don't have Beautiful. a DACA, you're you're stay at home mom, so you don't have the income, so it's always his money, his money. So I'll go back with your mom. Looks yes. like your mom supports you. Mm -hmm. Looks like she loves you. So I would really go back with your mom until he gets his shit together. Because obviously he's not paying attention to you. He's not renewing your DACA, which is something very important. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't let you work. He doesn't want to pay for the renewal, but he doesn't want to let you work. Yeah. So what is like, he's controlling you. He's literally controlling you. Dale una yeah. Go back with your mom. I think, honestly, girl, like I know it's hard and it's easier said than done, but seriously go back to your mom's house and let your mom pay for your DACA renewal get a job and be like you know what mom i'll pay you back as soon as i can let me alleviate my first and then just like what are what is he providing for you just yeah, what is he, over your head because yeah. he's not loving you he's not supporting you he's not like helping you get a better future nothing so what are you doing there like you're you're not benefiting from this at all whatsoever yeah a lot of guys think that that's all they have to do is just provide an income and a house and that's it that's all they got to do they don't got to play with their baby they don't got to you know be a father be a good loving husband like that's like gross like that like my dad the other day was talking about how his co-workers are all gross and nasty but they still expect their wives to be like all up on them it's like no like 
your husband, like, in your situation, like, he pays and stuff, but, like, he's not affectionate, but I'm assuming late at night, you know, he wants to do the freaky freaky, like, how does he expect that and then, you know, treat you like that, like, not show you love and affection, so. Yeah, that is so stupid, and, like, I feel like us girls, we're so easy to, like, pamper, like, in a way, yeah. like, you can literally be like, oh, good morning, I love you, and then you'd be like, oh, my God, you just made my entire day, you yeah. know, so why, like, what is stopping him from being nice to you or stopping him from like i feel like if i told you hey babe like i don't have money to renew my life yeah. like let's go like let's do it right now mm -hmm. whether we've had money or not and i did want to tell you also but depending on whatever state you live there's all so many daca renewal um what was he say like Program. little programs and groups that actually pay for it for you so get on like online and start looking at that because there's people that do it for free and that um help you with the actual like renewal fee so definitely look into that if you don't want to really take your mom's money at all but i'm truly saying this like from the bottom of my heart like leave it's not you should not be with someone that makes you feel like shit and doesn't support you and just things that like not make you feel head. heard imagine yeah. talking to someone and you feel like they're not responding and talking back like that's talking shitty to a wall, that is so sad yeah. i don't know girl you, like jonathan always says you only have one life like why would you live it being so sad and like unhappy that makes and sense and like to him you're like trash or like not a treasure and then you meet another guy and you're his whole world you know so yeah it's like that saying like oh remember when you're looking at another girl there's still another guy looking at yours like, or something like that so don't don't feel like you're tied down to this person just because he's like feeding you and putting a roof over your head that's not what being a husband is and i feel like in a lot of hispanic cultures that's what yeah. dads do they're like well i'm bringing food to the table and you have a roof over your head and that's all like no you need love and affection and support and just a good relationship and if you don't have that can look at the way they just go back to your mom i promise you you're gonna be much better with her than with this dumbass excuse my language but yeah guys i guess we always sound like a broken record and we're always going to be telling you guys to leave um but there's just not there hasn't been a time well maybe there has been not that i remember that we're like eh, you should stay and like work it out like sometimes we do say like communication is key like you can work it out but truthfully some of these advice podcasts it's like you've already tried to work it out and now you're talking to like asking us for advice so our advice is always going to be you only live once you better be happy and if being happy means leaving then do it girl mm -hmm. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> anyways guys that has been it for this week hopefully you enjoyed today's podcast and you're killing it at work or school um we wish you nothing but the best exciting news coming we're traveling again and merch is on in the works it's almost ready it's coming out i think you guys are gonna like it it's you know i won't even say it like it's just super cool and the fact that not only the merch is cool but like the things behind it and the meaning it has the which we'll tell you guys is super special too because the process of making this merch it has another meaning so it's double special okay yeah and i hope you like you guys love it um as we've always said our podcast community is like the best community and it's such a tight knit like supportive community so i hope that you guys enjoy it um you guys are literally the few people that have our like spill the beans merch podcast yeah. remember the one that we dropped like, yeah a lot of people ago? keep asking like where'd you guys get that where blah blah blah, blah. And it's, um, sorry it's exclusive, but yeah, if you guys can cop something, you know, obviously just a like and a comment is all that we need. But like we said, we don't really put, we don't, we've done it once. We don't put brands, we don't sell to marketing companies, we don't, you know, but, and we don't make a lot of income from this podcast. So if you guys could cop something that would mean the world, just so we can, you know, keep up the maintenance with the equipment, um, that would be great. Yep. And also... I am going to put our podcast on Spotify. I can't go back and like put all of them on Spotify because there's a Reganela. there's a really long process. But starting today with this podcast, you're gonna be able to listen to it on Spotify and where else does it go? Apple Podcasts and gotcha. all the platform, yeah, all the podcast platforms that you guys listen to podcasts on. So if you want to listen to us on your way to work and you don't want to be distracted by watching our beautiful faces, then we, we will be on uh, Spotify. And but since we're always doing giveaways here, you can like always check in and like and then comment and then go back to Spotify if you have to like work or drive or whatever because mm -hmm. yeah. 
Anyways, guys, we love you. Have a good rest of your weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye.